8th of September 2010, Jitlan Sreshta Nijgat, Pratik Daily. <clears throat> Bonjon, who is said to have been meditating without food, had been surrounded with a lot of controversy in recent years. Tapasvi Bonjon had now captured nine shepherds, keeping them locked up 20 hours. The shepherds left their houses yesterday morning on Tuesday to graze their cattle in the jungle before Tapasvi Bonjon had abducted them together with his followers at around 3 p.m. that day. He let them go only today. He claimed that they had entered a forbidden area which Bonjon had banned for any outsiders to enter and so he had locked them up in a hut in his jungle area. The secretary of the public forest users community, Jagjivan Kamuvar, told Pratik Daily that the captives were from Ratampuri 1 and Ratampuri 2, Bara district, and that some of the men included in the group were Rohit Guru, Harani Guru, Sanu Harani Guru, Thulo Harani Guru, Devia Guru, Rameshwar Guru, and Vital Lal Kuno, Kuar. There were four women among the shepherds held by Bomjon. Bomjon's committee chairman Nir Bahadur Thing said that the shepherds had entered Bomjon's forbidden area, damaging the barbed wire fence together with their cattle, and that there had been six, seven people more of them, but those had managed to escape back to the village. He claimed that they had taken away two kukuris knives and two sticks from the shepherds, but it's a normal equipment of shepherds to carry knives and sticks. Earlier this year, Bomjon had similarly abducted 17 Madishi villagers from Manaravali DC and tortured them overnight. Although there had been already six such incidents in Ram Bomjon's self-proclaimed banned jungle area till today, 2010, and despite police reports placed by the victims, the police continues to be passive and silent. Translated by Marici. Now, these nine sheep herds, why I know how was the story unfolded in reality? Because I was staying in 2012 later on in villages in the area of Hull, Korea. Even this happened after I was chained in the jungle by Bom John on between January and March 2012, because I wanted to know why the police was not doing anything, why there was a kind of silence and passivity and those who did this to me had been never punished, never questioned. And I myself was walking inside Hard Korea and meeting people and I wanted to know why did he do this to me. He broke my hand. So I was meeting local villagers, speaking with them. I did my own investigation. I even went to Bongjor, Bongjon's village, and spoke with his family, relatives, who were also his victims. So I wanted to search for Mata, his other victim, who was chained in the jungle together the time when I was. This Mata disappeared. And I spoke with his other victim, her first victim, Anil Khatri, who had been attacked by sword. So I wanted to know why he chained me and why he tortured me in 2012. So I was walking with local shepherds. I speak Nepali, so I was walking in the area of jungle and speaking with villagers, with fishermen 
with uh, shepherds and those who went for picking the herbs and grass in the area. So you must know that people go in groups because of this high grass to Halkoria because it's very good for the cattle. So they go as far as from Ratanpuri to Halkoria with a big group of cows and buffaloes and goats and because this grass, fanta grass, is very useful for the cattle and the they, Halkoria Daha water is good for the cattle and the shepherds can find some water springs to drink in the area and in the Daha they used to fish and this is Kurilo, it is a herb and this is Neuro, another herb they can be found in the area of the wetlands of Halkoria and the forest user community has the right to go and pick these herbs and this is bear, this is a fruit in the forest so because of this grass and because of these herbs and fruits and the rich forest products the government had allowed the local community to use the forest with limits of course and also the fishermen the Tamangs as well, the Tarus, they used to go to fish in the Halkoria Daha lake. So I was joining these groups of shepherds and they also carry kukuri, as you see, and uh, knives and uh, kurpas, sickles, because this is the normal equipment of shepherds in Nepal and all over the world, and sticks. So Bomjuan's uh, followers who catch them, who caught them, this is Nil Bahadur Ting and Ram Kumar, they were claiming lies that these kukuris and sticks were planned to attack Bomjuan. Not at all. This is the normal equipment of sheep herds and sickle. And local people know it. Even women used to carry kukuris, sticks and sickle. And of course, if you travel in the jungle, even in groups, there are tigers and other wild animals, you need some. So I was using this road going from Ratampuri to Halkoria myself with the ship herds through the jungles. It is uh, around 10 kilometers. And because I know Halkoria, how it looks like, I know the paths, so uh, uh, I understood that Ratanpuri, this is Ratanpuri, is not so rich anymore. The human factor is too strong in Ratanpuri. There is not much grass for all cattle. But in front of the Halkoria settlement of Bonjon, this is the dry riverbed, every year high grass is growing. At least this was until Bonjon settled there and uh, his followers trampled the dry river bed and there were less and less grass. So this is me still in 2012 when I was walking inside Halkoria and I was researching why he did this to me, why this is his settlement where he has building houses and he actually encroached the government jungle and put boards everywhere, no entry and he put a lot of barbed wire fence all around this huge area of 13 kilometer compound and he built houses there and he didn't allow local villagers to use that jungle anymore so he was like a little king in that area and that would be okay if he was just meditating but he was attacking all these poor villagers who had no other source of income or food. Some of the people didn't have anything than cattle and uh, this kurilo, they can sell it in India and get some money from this. But Bonjon created a special compound there for his kingdom where he had his followers. And they didn't know that when they enter this holy man meditating in the jungle would simply attack them with sticks 
and lock them up and beat them for hours and hours together with his followers of course he never did it alone because what i knew was is a buddhist he is a meditator and he did the same thing two months before this incident for 17 Madishi people, which look like, like Indians, a different kind of uh, ethnic group. And they were also, in my uh, perception, looking for Kurilo in the Devdaha, in the Malkuria Daha area. And this is Neuro, this is a vegetable, very tasty. And they all grow in the area of the wetlands of the Malkuria Daha. So I was going from Nayabasti in the north, when you see the arrow, red arrow, up till Halkoria one time, uh, together with the people who are just going through the jungle to search for this Kurilo. Because the Kurilo is uh, very expensive in India and they can sell it. And this grows in the area of Halkoria Daha only, not in the villages. So they go through the whole jungle and pick these herbs and they pick uh, the neuro and of course they use kukuri, knives and so-called weapons, sickles because this is the normal equipment of Nepali shepherds and I think shepherds all over the world. So I was going with them and trying to understand what happened actually and this is the kurilo. This is a herb which is used in herbal medicine preparations in India and Nepal as well. So, before this incident of nine sheep herds, there was the 17 Madishis whom also Bomjong attacked, locking up them in one of his huts and beating them together with his followers and in that time also this is Nilha Bahadur Thing and Ram Kumar Tamang they had been arguing that the villagers were trying to enter Bomjong's area breaking his barbed wire fences but as you see this kind of barbed wire fence was also Bomjong's and I was staying in Hal Korea as his follower for two, three months in 2011. So I know I saw it with my own eyes. These barbed wire fences were in very bad condition. They were by, bought by this Mr. Moon, Korean Canadian uh, donor of Bonjon. But he is a pensioner, he didn't have so much money. So he bought just as much as he could collect from his pension. And he, anyway, paid for 13 kilometer barbed wire fence all around Rambomjong's compound but still it was just two lines of barbed wire fence so sometimes it was missing also and sometimes it was down by animals or cars and tractors so people didn't really take it seriously or didn't see it from the big grass and so some people, Bongjong's followers, had been allowed to enter his area without restrictions and some people were not. And that was not really clear who was allowed, who was not allowed. And this was a sort and government jungle, but he encroached it and made his own kingdom there. And sometimes there were areas without fence and Bongjong still considered them his area and he used to kidnap people from areas which were not known for them as his own compound. And he always had helpers, followers, even monks, who were beating these people in his huts and torturing them. He was never alone in this. And this incident of the nice nine shepherds should be still investigated and opened again because there was a lot of corruption from the beginning of Bom John's activities and the people had been beaten, thrashed by sticks, by many people, by many followers of Bom John. So I know how it is because I myself had been beaten by sticks and locked up for three months, chained actually in the jungle, by these followers Bom John was thrashing me, torturing me three months. And for some time I was also locked up in this hut. 
So the police is very corrupt. As you see, he's, they are sitting with Mani Lama and other Bomjons committee members. This is just Badur Vaiba. They had been regularly bribing the police not to do anything. And the poor victims who had no money. You see Bomjon with Sushil Koirala, prime minister, who is died already. Sushil Koirala uh, bowing to Bomjon, putting together his hands. And these are his committee members who are even now, this is Sher Bahadur De Deuba, ex-Prime Minister, and these are the three politicians who are supporting Bonjon against his victims of violence. And everyone is bowing to him like a god, even the politicians in Nepal. So victims has no chance for justice in Nepal. And these are his powerful men interconnected with politicians. So the corruption, police corruption and the support of the government should be reconsidered again. Thank you.